Hey everyone, Church of SDFU. Um, sorry for not responding to things and comments um, in, you know, the last couple of weeks or even months. It's just I'm really, really busy. Uh, that's why I've also stopped any pretense I ever had of making any real scripted videos. So it's, you know, this is pretty much what you can expect for the next couple of months while I work on my, <clears throat> my uni stuff. Um, but I just want to make a brief little video, um, kind of inspired by a recent video that I saw, but not really directly responding to it. Um, so this video is about postmodernism, and the re reason I wanted to make it is because, you know, as part of that kind of, as part of um, a video I recently saw, I just looked up postmodernism on YouTube to see what YouTube had to say. And I wasn't surprised to find that YouTube didn't really have too much to say because it usually isn't so great with um, philosophical concepts and so on, um, or, you know, artistic or whatever you want to call it, um, sociological, it's got all of these aspects. Uh, but what videos there are, are all negative, and a lot of them present very little um, in the way of actual definition of postmodernism, and if they do, it's a very distorted definition. Um, so postmodernism is always this kind of boogeyman, which is associated often with these other terms like cultural Marxist, and um, you know, it's painted just as this absolute relativism and this absolute nihilism. That's my feeling, at least. That's what comes across, and a lot of the videos. Um, attacking it are from religious people that kind of feel iffy towards it because they find it's challenged God, which is of course true. Um, but in fact, it wasn't really. I mean, the challenge began before postmodernism. It's just um, postmodernism does threaten certainty. Um, that's certainly true. So I mean, and I'm not the optimal person here to make this video. Uh, to be quite honest, I you know I did my little bit of study at University of Philosophy, but it was not my degree. Um, it was all kind of um, optional units that I took, and I did my little bit of reading, but I'm by no means an expert. The problem is, as I said, I, I've seen videos on YouTube so far, almost all of them are just negative, kind of straw man um, portrayals of postmodernism, so I figure I can't really do too much worse than um, some of those videos at least. Um, and you know, other videos have very reasonable criticisms of postmodernism, and I'll come back to what I think reasonable criticism of an overblown form of postmodernism is myself. Um, but first to start with, what is postmodernism? Um, I mean, if you want to put it in one sentence, it's um, the critique of the idea of a meta-narrative, where a meta-narrative is an overarching narrative uh, that that works for the entire world. Um, so postmodernists suggest that there really is no such thing, or even if there were such a thing, I mean probably there is no such thing fundamentally because you can't reduce every human being's experience to one big narrative. Um, people are different and the subjectivities that people develop uh, mean that you can't really impose the same ultimate global narrative on someone that's living on one side of the world to someone that's living on the other side of the world, or maybe someone with these kind of genes or this kind of upbringing to someone with these kind of genes and that kind of upbringing. Um, and I mean, a, a subtler point as well is that, which I think postmodernism also includes, is that even if there were some such narrative, or at least an approximation of such a narrative, we certainly don't have any unadulterated access to it. That is to say, um, you might have some such narrative in your head, which you think kind of fits everything and allows you to explain history um, and humanity as a whole. Uh, but there's no real way for you to objectively um, verify this with any degree of certainty. You can't really say, even if you've you know, tried to build that meta-narrative on a scientific basis, 
you can't really say that it's scientifically definitely valid. Um, and it may be that it's because we just don't have enough data, um, although I guess it would require an immense amount of data to produce such a meta narrative that we could really rely on. But I think a lot of postmodernists would suggest it's simply um, not possible to do so. And it doesn't, I mean, a lot of postmodernists would probably say that's why we shouldn't try. I mean, I personally disagree, and I think it makes sense to create a vague approximation of a meta narrative, um, at least for aspects of human uh, society and civilization. But I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but the idea is there that we need to criticize any such meta narratives and be very, very kind of uh, skeptical towards them. And the thing is, this didn't come out of nowhere. Uh, Postmodernism is a reaction to, I mean, basically, it's not really different from modernism. In many ways, it builds on modernism. And it's a reaction to an earlier post-enlightenment realism, where people thought that through science, they could discover this um, kind of meta-narrative idea of the world. And then they would just be in the right, and they could just act on that. And they wouldn't really, you know, they could just act on these scientific principles, and they could just fix the world. Now, the reason why people became critical is because of all the failures that that brought about. I mean, if you look at the political ideologies that were scientifically convinced of themselves, you get to the ideologies that started two world wars. Um, if you look at colonialism, that was all going along with the idea that the West is not only not only the dominant um, the dominant force, the dominant culture, but also the superior culture in pretty much every way that is important to mention. So that was the meta narrative of the time, and that meta narrative was supported by the science of the day, which suggested that these other peoples were primitive and um, and were in need of this salvation by the West. So this narrative allowed immense exploitation of the colonized peoples and also immense essentially crimes against humanity like when the Australian government in the country where I am now a citizen, Australia, took Aboriginal native children from their parents and placed them with white parents because they thought that would be better for the children because Aboriginal people um, aren't capable of taking care of children because they're culturally and probably, um, you know, biologically inferior. And that was all part of a meta narrative which was held for a long time and was thought to be scientifically held and scientifically correct. And so anyone who challenged it would get shot down. Um, and there was really a rejection that there could be any other way of thinking about this. And all of history was seen as this struggle of the West gaining dominance through its superior values. Um, and you can still see that in a lot of the way that we interpret history today. And I think in that example, it is perfectly reasonable to critique that meta narrative and to step back and think about whether that's really the correct way to interpret history. Um, and, you know, of course, then if I suggest a way to interpret history, then that's equally open to criticism. But that's really, to me at least, and I'm, what postmodernism is about, it's about not having this fixed concept of not saying, well, this is how it is. Let's get that out of the way and let's just work from there. Which is, of course, an idea that people want to have. As, you know, scientists love this idea. And most people enjoy the idea of having something rock solid that we can just build everything on and don't have to question. That's why being skeptical, being a skeptic, um, has really taken on all of these negative connotations in a lot of senses because people don't enjoy these ideas being questioned. If you want to look at another example of what I think this kind of uh, meta-narrative brought about is eugenics, which um, was this, this idea that we understood science 
and that science, the meta narrative of scientific progress, gave us a way to fix the human um, species. And this meta narrative dictated that we ought to manipulate ourselves through eugenics, through the uh, destruction or kind of um, or more gentle kind of elimination through sterilization and so on and so forth of undesirable elements in humanity. Now it turned out that the science behind that was wrong. So we can see there that we didn't have real access to the bigger meta narrative. Um, but just as importantly, um, the meta narrative itself would only hold if you accepted that what humanity should go towards is some kind of um, genetic perfection. Now we may say that that's not the meta narrative that fits most humanity or even any of humanity. Really we should have been more concerned about uh, humanitarian values and you know human happiness or one of those kind of concepts and so trying to um, have this meta narrative and trying to force that on society as a whole with limited discussion was a bad thing and the fact that people were so um, in a way gullible when it came to anything that was endorsed by science even if it was bad science that they were so willing to be fooled by any scientific meta narrative was part of the problem so that's where postmodernism comes in and goes no you have to challenge that meta narrative you can't just take it as a as a given uh, the way that you're interpreting as scientific as you may think it is is something which is completely open to question um, and it contains a lot of subjectivities as well um, there are things that science, you know, I mean you could argue if we had a perfect scientific understanding of every part of humanity, this is my belief as a determinist, then we could really create a kind of meta-narrative that would be incredibly complex but that could describe everything. Um, it would kind of be this perfect scientific explanation of every single thing that goes on inside all human beings at the same time but we're certainly miles away from that and we'll probably never reach that and if we can't reach that like we haven't now then it's arrogant and dangerous to assume that we can create this meta narrative which will work for all humans with all of their current kind of subjectivities uh, so we need to be aware of that and we can't just treat uh, we can't just force our meta narrative our world view so to speak onto everyone else with especially not without dialogue and that's what goes on a lot and that's what a lot of people struggle with and a lot of people uh, so and that's what a lot of postmodernists want to say no we need to actually challenge all of those ideas all the time we need to challenge ideas of progress what does progress mean do we want this form of progress and so on and so forth um, I mean economics you've got again a meta narrative of increasing production of increase of of, of uh, economic growth which is which is um, a compound kind of growth which is in fact unsustainable mathematically because it's exponential right if you if your economy grows by seven percent every year then it'll double every ten years if it grows by less it'll still double the time will be slightly uh, longer depending on how, what the percentage is but the fact is you're creating an exponential growth which cannot continue so the meta narrative here is definitely wrong because you can't see um, human civilization in the long term in these ways um, at least not without great modification so again you need to challenge the meta narrative now is there such a thing as postmodernism that's going too far? Um, well, sure there is. Yes, there are people that basically go, well, we can't fashion a meta narrative. So really, we need to give up on the whole concept together. Language is useless. We can't really communicate. 
Uh, we can't really agree. Everyone has their own subjectivity that rules them. So let's just give up this project of civilization. Let's just all go to our house and do our own thing because it's all hopeless. Um, and you, you get to the point of total um, kind of cultural relativism and so on and so forth. Um, and I think that's not productive. And to me, that's not a... That, that's not the way I want to go. That's kind of postmodernism taken to its, um, taken not just as a way of critique, but as a way of, um, as a kind of in the ultimate sense, I guess. Um, but, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just accept that we can challenge these things. You can accept that we can that we can work on something that approximates a meta-narrative so we can work together as a society, but that we have to realize that it's not really a meta-narrative, that it should be open to challenge, and that we do need to allow room in that for other people um, in their own communities and their own groups to um, develop their own subjectivities and to, um, to live life in their own way. Um, and so, I mean, I have to say the same thing about the kind of realism and rationalism and post-enlightenment thought. I mean, it's a great idea, you know, in its essence. You know, you, you want to explore the world, you want to you wanna have empirical evidence, and you want to explain the world. These are great things, and they've brought us very far. The problem was when people applied this with a dogmatic, um, with a dogmatic approach that didn't realize the shortcomings of that technique, especially given how little we know and understand back then and still today. As I said, if we understood everything, then we might be able to do it, but we don't. So given those shortcomings, the technique was failing and people refused to acknowledge the failure and to intercede by accepting that there were subjectivities um, in human relations. And so they took this idea of rationalism and science um, into domains where it didn't work anymore. And so we got some very bad outcomes. The same will happen if you take postmodernism and the idea that all of these things are completely subjective to that extent. So to me, I mean, yes, I, I mean, I won't call myself a rationalist or a postmodernist. I don't really think the two conflict. I can be a postmodern rationalist. I can accept that both have very important things to offer humanity at this stage of our uh, evolution, uh, kind of, you know, genetically, but also culturally and philosophically, because we haven't developed the kind of understanding that could let us view the world in this meta-narrative way, in a fail-safe way. We just don't have that knowledge. So we need to be open to always debating and always accepting that we don't know yet. But at the same time, we need to accept that it is important to um, take the best guess on some level and to work towards that whilst having that debate, because otherwise we're just not going to get anywhere. Um, so those are my thoughts on um, on postmodernism and what it means to me. I mean, you know, obviously, as I said, not a professional, <laughs> not a professional um, philosopher or anything, but that's what I get out of it. And to me, it's very, it's a very powerful idea. And I think the truth is we're all a bit postmodernist these days. You know, most people are a bit postmodernist. Some people who are really dogmatic about something are not. Um, and at the same time, most people are a bit rationalist. Um, some people are not. They're all, ooh, you know. But most people have both of these things and they combine them in some way. And I think that's a much more fruitful discussion to have. Where should we mostly apply this? Where should we mostly apply that? How can we best combine them? Rather than, um, than what's the word I'm looking for? You know, vilifying 
this concept and throwing it in with with you know communism and cultural marxism which again are terms that uh that i think are misused and vilified unnecessarily um but postmodernism i think is not an evil thing it doesn't mean that you can't tell whether killing children is bad or it doesn't mean that women have to have the right to shoot men on the street and men have to be kept in cages like you know like is sometimes made up um anyways church of sfu i'll see you guys all later